सो सी एफ ए लेवल टू पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजमेंट टू बी एक्सप्रेसिड इकोनॉमिक्स एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट मार्केट्स सो जस्ट गिव हेडिंग द नोट्स इकोनॉमिक्स एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट मार्केट्स सो इट्स अ न्यू रीडिंग इन टू थाउजेंड एंड सिक्सटीन सिलेबस एंड द नेम विल गिव यू सम इंट्यूशन अबाउट वॉट दे रियली वॉन्ट टू टीच यू और हेल्प यू लर्न आउट ऑफ दिस रीडिंग दैट वॉट इन्फ्लुएंस डज इकोनॉमिक्स हैव ऑन द इन्वेस्टमेंट मार्केट्स ओके सो इट्स कैंड ऑफ अ मोर जेनेरिक डिस्कशन देर आर नो कैलकुलेशन फॉर से सो इट्स मोर फोकस्ड ऑन थियोरी एंड इट शुड भी रिलेटिवली ईजी टू हैंडल सो इट इज गॉट मोर और लेस रिपीटेशन ऑफ द स्टफ दैट वी हैव इन लर्निंग थ्रू आउट लेवल वन एंड सर्टन अदर पार्ट ऑफ सी एफ लेवल टू सो द थीम ऑफ द स्टोरी इज लाइक दिस सो देव सेट दैट वैल्यू ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट इज प्राइमरीली अ फंक्शन ऑफ टू वेरिएबल्स so value of investments is a function of number 1 what are the future cash flows and number 2 what is the appropriate discount rate and would you agree that this discount rate would be a function of what is the variability of these cash flows so certain assets think equity where cash flows would be more variable and if cash flows are more variable then you would expect the discount rate to be relatively higher whereas certain assets uh, think fixed income where cash flows are relatively stable and if cash flows are stable the discount rates are going to be relatively lower so the reading typically starts with how do you think of number 1 a short term interest rate a short term interest rate so they have said that short term interest rate is a function of number 1 what is the real rate of interest may as you all of you can distinguish between the nominal interest rate and real so removing the effect of inflation so real interest rate plus what is the expected inflation that's the basic premise of the first formula so what is the real interest rate plus what is the expected inflation are we okay then they've said how do you think of a slightly longer term interest rate longer term interest rate now we are still on rfr on both of them now what they say in this learning outcome that if the interest rate horizon of, is of longer term then there is some uncertainty which is attached to that expected inflation right so your expectation of inflation might turn out to be lesser than the actual or more than the actual and because there is some uncertainty around this an investor should be compensated for the uncertainty so he should get a risk premium so now the formula is real rate plus expected inflation plus risk premium for the inflation is that making sense to you so we have already seen this relationship in the past and we used to call this as international fisher relationship right so precisely the same thing where he said nominal rate would be made of real plus what is the expectation of inflation and since this number is uncertain to compensate for that variability there should be a risk premium attached to it then they said how do you think of how do you think of uh, the return that you would earn on a credit risk bond that means any bond which is not or credit risk uh, instrument so now the equation works like this so you will say rate of return plus what is the expected inflation plus risk premium for inflation and plus risk premium that you should earn for having taken the credit risk is this making sense then they discuss what is the return that you should earn if you decide to invest in equities so now the equation becomes real rate of return plus expected inflation 
प्लस रिस्क प्रीमियम ऑन इन्फ्लेशन प्लस रिस्क प्रीमियम फॉर क्रेडिट एंड प्लस एडिशनल रिस्क प्रीमियम फॉर इक्विटी सो कंपेयर टू अ क्रेडिट बॉन्ड यू वुड एक्सपेक्ट टू अर्न मोर सो दे एन एडिशनल रिस्क प्रीमियम अटैच हियर हियर सो दिस रिस्क प्रीमियम ऑफ इक्विटी is an incremental return over and above credit so in india if you buy bonds of let us say uh, a triple a rated uh, or double a rated bond let's say lnt so if you buy a bond of lnt maybe you would expect to earn 11 11.5% so this region the return that you would earn on the bond is about 11.5% now compared to bond will you expect to earn additional returns on equity so that additional return might be let us say 3% and then return on the equity would be 14 and a half percent is it making sense now it is pre pretty much precisely the same formula they have used greek letters so they have used uh, gammas and alphas thetas and pi and uh, all other greek letters to denote this relationship but essentially this is the core of the reading and then the reading also discusses about uh, what is the utility investor gets when he consumes now versus the utility that he gets if he decides to defer his consumption because that is essentially a function of real interest rate and some other variables around this